Hi everybody, my name is Melissa Kale. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and Pilates instructor. Today we're gonna learn how to stretch your hip flexor muscles, your iliopsoas, which is actually two muscles, your iliacus and your psoas. The psoas attaches onto your lumbar spine, iliacus attaches onto the iliac bone of your pelvis. So when those muscles are tight, what happens is we tend to go into an anterior tilt of your pelvis, which creates a little bit more pressure in the lower back, especially when you're doing a lot of walking or standing. So to stretch those out, what you do is you step, let's say I wanna stretch my right hip flexor, my right iliopsoas muscles. You're gonna put the right leg behind you, kneecaps point straight ahead, and you want enough space between your front and your back foot that you start to feel a little bit of a pull here in the front of your, your right hip. And then from here, the most important part that some people miss is you need to tip your pelvis posteriorly. So you need to take your tailbone and tip it down underneath you to take that curve out of your spine so that you're stretching, especially the psoas, because that is again attaching onto your lower back. So we need to flex that lower part of your back with that posterior tilt of the pelvis to get that deep stretch in both of those muscles. Once you've got that posterior tilt, if you're still not feeling a stretch, you start to lean forward a little bit of weight into your front leg. If here you're still not feeling anything, I would reset, make the distance between your front and left, your front and back foot a little bigger. Do your posterior tilt, bend that back knee so you can really get that posterior tilt until you feel that stretch. Then you're gonna reach your right arm up to the sky and we can add a little bit of extra intensity to the stretch by leaning to the left side, away from that right hip. You wanna hold this as you're breathing for at least 30 seconds and just keep checking in that that tailbone is really tucked underneath. When the hip is tight, it's really gonna to wanna to pull you forward like this. So you have to pay very close attention to really tucking your tailbone down so that you feel this pull right in the front of the hip and then you take a break. And you do that three rounds, two, at least two to three rounds. And if it is really tight, twice a day would be ideal. Now, the other version that you can do, it's a little, maybe a little bit stronger, or is in a kneeling position. Just wanna have a little bit of cushion on the floor for you, like a pillow works really well. So the right leg, again, if I'm stretching my right hip, right knee is gonna be down on the pillow. I'm gonna start here with that little bit of a tilt in my pelvis. And just here alone, I can already start to feel it in the front of my hip. If you need to, you can lean forward a little bit, but as you come forward, again, pay attention that that lower back doesn't change position. You still have that nice posterior tilt of your pelvis. Then we'll reach the right arm up, lean over to the left side. Once you feel the stretch, you just hold and breathe. And the intensity of the stretch should feel around somewhere in the middle, not too strong, not too light, maybe a five out of 10 intensity wise. The most benefit you're gonna get out of it is from doing it more consistently rather than trying to stretch all the tightness in your hip muscle out in one session. And take a break. Now, there's one more hip flexor muscle that's your rectus femoris, one of your quadricep muscles. That one attaches onto the very front of your pelvis. This one can also contribute to some back pain, some hip pain, so it's just good to know how to stretch your, your rectus femoris as well. With this one, you can come into more of a lunge position with your ankle directly underneath your knee. So if I'm stretching my right rectus, I'm gonna bring my right hand down, bend my knee, and then reach back with my left hand and grab onto my foot. And again, I'm paying attention to that back position, not over extending, keep some neutral spine position. And if, this is, if your rectus is really tight, you may not be able to reach your foot. This might be really hard to do. In that case, you can grab like a towel or a strap and hold that way. I hope you found this video helpful. This gives you a few ideas of things that you can try to see if it helps. 
a lot of times just this alone can be really beneficial for reducing some back pain that you have with walking. There's other times where just stretching the hip flexors alone isn't quite enough. Sometimes the hip flexors are tight for other reasons. They're tight because the core muscles are, are weak and they're compensating. So they're continuing to do work beyond their capacity. So they spasm and they tighten up. So stretching might feel temporarily really good, but then the pain comes right back because the ultimate reason that the hip flexors are tight in the first place is some core weakness. And in that case, you need to do core strengthening. Um, the hip flexors can also be tight and spasmy because of hip weakness or because of SI joint problems. So if you're finding that doing, you feel like your hip is tight and you're stretching it and it's just not getting you what you need, in terms of pain relief, what would be best is to see a physical therapist, someone like me, so I can do a full assessment and see where your area of dysfunction is and we could treat it appropriately. So if you have more questions, you can leave in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website to find more information about how to set up a free discovery visit if you want to meet with me and see if physical therapy can help you or I also have information on my website on my Pilates classes. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.